So, in the last class we have done a detailed study about all means of transport that is land, water and air. Now, we are moving on to the next topic that is communication. What is communication? Communication refers to exchange of ideas, emotions and technology between the people and also with other countries. So, since the evolution of human beings on the earth, they use various means of communication. At present, you all know there is such a rapid development of modern means of communication which has made the world shrink into a very small unit. So, that way there is marvelous development of different means of communication which has made communication more easy irrespective of the distance. Irrespective of the distance that we can talk to anyone in the world without any physical movement or the receiver. So, that way we can convey our ideas, emotions and also we can also exchange the technology uh, mainly uh, the information technology by which we are able to progress from time and again. Now, coming to the types of communication, we have got two types of communication. One is the personal communication that is between uh, two people and then we have got mass communication with a large number of people. So, in the personal communication we have got mobile phones, we have got uh, letters, then envelopes, cards by which we can talk, uh, communicate with two or more people and when talk about millions of people at the same time we have got the mass communication. So, some of the examples of mass communication they are radio, television, press and films. These are all the uh, ones by which we are able to talk at the same time with millions of people across the world. Now, let us see the important means of communication that we have developed in India. So, first and the foremost is the postal communication. So, you all know the India uh, Indian postal network is the largest in the world which is uh, which has completed 150 years of service. India post is the emblem which talks about the postal communication. It has completed 150 years of service and it is the largest network in the world. And not only it handles the postcards and so on, it handles the parcels and also the personal written communication in the form of the postcards and envelopes. So, we have got different kinds of uh, services offered by the postal communication. First, we have the first class mail which include the cards and envelopes which are air lifted because they are very light which can be transported even by the um, planes from place to place air lifted between the stations. After that, it covers the land and air transport covering both land and air. So, that way these cards and envelopes they are called as the first class mail. Then coming to this second one, we have the second class mail which includes the books, periodicals and newspapers, registered newspapers which are sent from one country to another country which are carried by surface mail covering the land and water transport because the distance is uh, um, longer and also they are comparatively heavier than the cards and envelopes, they cannot be airlifted. So, mainly they are transported to land and water transport, right. So, these are the two uh, important services which are provided by the postal communication and other than that very recently the postal communication has introduced six mail channels for quick delivery of the mails in major towns and cities. So, they are Rajdhani channel, metro channel, green channel, business channel, bulk mail channel that is in terms of the heavy things like uh, we may have the uh, invitation cards or some kind of uh, bulk material the, um, learning materials, stu study materials which are transported which are heavy in nature. So, these are all in uh, sent in bulk that means in large numbers. Okay. 
and then business channel is mainly for the business uh, uh, magazines and so on then we have the periodical channel which are having some registered pedi periodicals which are um, weekly monthly fortnightly which are there which are sent from one place to another place and other than this uh, one we have got the pin code system which has been introduced for the quick delivery of mails what is pin code pin code is a postal index number right pin code is the postal index number so once the number is seen the postman is able to know that this is of Mumbai, this is of Bangalore, this is of Chennai. So, they can easily sort out these uh, mails very quickly which will help in quick delivery of the mails. And then we have got another reliable service which is being provided that is called as a courier service where the uh, goods are handled personally uh, with the uh, assurance of getting the signature of the person who has received so that it is having the reliability that within uh, 24 hours it has to be delivered to the person concerned. So, that way some of the confidential information which has to reach the person very quickly, we have got the uh, hand couriers which are operated by the postal communication also. Right. Now, let us go to the telecommunication that is the telephone network. India has the one of the largest telecom network in Asia. And Today, you can see more than two thirds of the villages in India, they are already covered by the STD facility that is subscriber trunk dialing, the uh, telephone facility which is already available even in villages besides the urban cities. Earlier, these villages were not having this facility, but now two thirds of the villages in India, they are covered by the STD facility subscriber trunk dialing, right. And then we have uh, ISD that is international subscriber dialing that is for the uh, with other countries that is the international service. To accelerate the flow of information, the government has introduced certain policies by which people can be helped to have a uh, better telecommunication uh, network in remote areas that the government has extended 24 hours of STD facilities to every village in our country and the rates are uniform both in rural and urban areas. So, that way uh, in rural areas as they do not have other means of communication, higher forms of communication are not available or they cannot afford. So, this has helped in uh, conveying the messages within a short period of time. So, that way the rates have been kept uniform both in rural and urban areas and we have got 24 hours STD facility extended to every village in India. And this has been made possible by the integration and development of the space technology with that of the communication technology. We are able to extend this facility to almost every village in our country. So, by which people are able to communicate uh, very easily. Now, let us move on to the mass communication. So, the word mass itself tells you it talks about large number. So, it is a communication with a large number of people at the same time. Like you can all uh, see the radio uh, network where one person is reading the news which is being heard by the people across the world. So, you can know what is the latest happening in every part of the world within a short period of time. So, you can see the um, cricket match played in other countries and you can see various kinds of um, programs that has been there uh, in other parts of the world sitting at home in a relaxed manner. So, that way mass communication refers to the communication with a large number of people at the same time. So, again in the mass communication we have got two types that is electronic media and uh, print media. So, we have the examples of electronic media as radio, television, computers, films, internet, all these are the uh, examples of electronic media. And in the print media, we have the books, magazines and newspapers, they are the uh, print media, examples of print media, right. Now, let us see what are the 
important contribution of mass communication to the society now subscribe to bright duty course at rupees 1 per day only download bright duty app from play store and get the online courses prepared by competent and experienced teachers for different education boards of classes 6 to 10 bright duty courses are available for the subjects of math science social science english and hindi in english and hindi medium Bright Duty follows three step approach that is learning assessment and exam preparation in learning topic wise video lectures with explanation of concepts and discussion of textbook examples and questions are available with the solutions in assessment topic wise online mcq test practice assignments and chapter wise question bank are available with the solutions in exam preparation previous years question papers sample papers and model test papers are available with the solutions sign up today on bright duty and avail your courses at affordable prices so mass communication provides education entertainment and creates awareness among the people about various national programs and policies implemented by the government so like we have the various uh, programs and policies which are introduced uh, recently by the government which have been covered by the mass communication so they are a means of entertainment education and the awareness generation about the various government policies are there in the radio and television and newspapers which can make the people aware of what is going on and what are the schemes and provision that have been uh, announced by the government to various people now coming to the uh, radio network all india radio or the akashwani is a radio network in our country which is uh, broadcasting various programs at the national regional and local languages for all age groups living in different parts of the country so we have got varieties of programs which are there in Uh, all india radio which is broadcasted for various uh, people and also in very many languages now our doordarshan network or the television network is called as doordarshan it is a television network and again we have one of the largest network in the world one of the okay and this also broadcast various programs from education to entertainment then sports for the people of all age groups so sitting at home we can know what is happening in various parts of the country as well as in various parts of the world now another means of uh, mass communication is the newspaper so india publishes different newspapers and periodicals regarding newspapers we are publishing newspapers in more than 100 languages and dialects right and we have the largest circulation of newspapers in hindi which is a national language followed by english and urdu the other regional languages there is uh, less circulation limited to their own uh, state now the next electronic media of uh, communication mass communication is the films so when when you talk about uh, films india is again the largest producer of feature films in the world and we produce three different types of films in india we have short films video feature films and video short films okay and we have got a very important uh, organization called as central board of film certification which is the authority that certifies the indian and foreign film so it is the censor board which um, is the authority which certifies the indian and foreign films so anything which is not to be seen uh, by the people they have been removed before it is there in the screen so that way the central board of film certification has the authority uh, to certify all the indian and foreign films before it is there on the screen so with the permission of this uh, board only we can uh, have the films 
they are in the theatres. Now, the next important topic of discussion is international trade. So, trade first refers to the exchange of goods among the people, states and countries. The place where it takes place, it is called the market. So, you should know what is the term trade means. Trade is the exchange of goods. But again, uh, trade is of two types, internal trade and international trade. Internal trade is the trade that we carry on within our own country. International trade is a trade that we carry on between the countries. So, among the two types of trades, international trade is very important because it brings in foreign exchange which can be used for other developmental activity. So, trade is of two types, internal and international. And internal trade refers to the trade within the country. So, between our 29 states if we carry on the trade it is called the international uh, sorry it is called as internal trade and international trade it refers to the trade that we carry on between two or more countries which takes place through land air and sea routes and if we talk about the local trade it is done in cities that is in the marketplace where we have certain things which are sold in retail and wholesale within the uh, city that is called the local trade uh, which is there in the cities and towns and villages and state level trade is done between two or more states right. So, that way these are all uh, part of the trade how we do it and where we do it and uh, that way it is called as the local trade that is done between the cities, towns and villages and then state level trade is done between two or more states and if we do trade within uh, our country it is called as in internal trade and if we do the trade between countries it is called as the international trade. So, out of the various types of trade, international trade is of great significance to, our, uh, to any country in the world because it brings value addition to the economy. So, this advancement of international trade of a country, it is an index to the economic prosperity of a nation. Suppose if we talk about developed country or developing country or underdeveloped country, it is been justified from the uh, vo volume of international trade that a country carries on. So, that way uh, it is considered to be an index to determine whether a country is developed or developing or underdeveloped. And advancement of the international trade, it is been used to know whether a country's uh, economic prosperity of the country has been identified from the advancement of international trade. So, because of this, this international trade, it is known as the economic barometer for the country. Just like uh, we uh, talk about per capita income and other things they are the index to determine the country's economic development. This is also one of the index which determines the country's economic prosperity or development. Now, this international trade is very important for the country because no country in the world is self-sufficient in everything. So, naturally we need to exchange whatever we are having in surplus, we need to exchange it with other countries, whatever we are deficient, we have to get it from other countries. So, that way every country has to carry on the trade between the countries which is the international trade and to meet our requirements definitely it has to be done. So, that way no country can just say we do not have international trade. So, it has to be uh, taking place because every country is not self-sufficient in everything. We may have something in surplus, we may be deficient in something else, right. So, that way international trade is very important for every country in the world. Now, there are two components of international trade, one is export, another one is import. Export means whatever goods that we are sending it or selling it to other countries. Import means whatever we are buying or which is bought from other countries. So, these are all small definitions which you have to be aware of. So, the two main components of international trade are 
export and import because uh, over the years the items of export and imports have undergone a change the countries with which we are exporting and importing have undergone a change so you should know what is import and what is export what are the items of export and import that we are doing it and what was done earlier so all these were the changes which have occurred over the years so that way you have to be familiar with the terms export refers to the goods which are sold to other countries import refers to the goods which are bought from other countries right now using the term export and import we have got a very important term balance of trade so this term is very very important which can be asked in your examination so you have to be very careful while defining the term balance of trade refers to the difference between the value of exports and imports it is not the um in terms of uh, money it is the value of the export and the imports right so it is not the items it is a value of the exports and imports if you find the difference between the two that is called as the balance of trade and again in the balance of trade we have got two types favorable and unfavorable that is favorable means favorable balance of trade is a situation when the value of exports is more than the value of imports right so if you export more we will be getting more money which you can pay it for getting the imports but if the value of export is more like if you are uh, exporting uh, iron and steel goods or jewelry these are all the ones which fetches more money whereas you know, you may be importing uh, food grains or something else where the value of these um, items are less so that way if the value of export exceeds the value of imports then it is called as fa favorable balance of trade so you will have some money in surplus which you can use it for developmental activities now subscribe to bright duty course at rupees 1 per day only download bright duty app from play store and get the online courses prepared by competent and experienced teachers for different education boards of classes 6 to 10 bright duty courses are available for the subjects of math science social science english and hindi in english and hindi medium bright duty follows three step approach that is learning assessment and exam preparation in learning topic wise video lectures with explanation of concepts and discussion of textbook examples and questions are available with the solutions in assessment topic wise online mcq test practice assignments and chapter wise question bank are available with the solutions in exam preparation previous years question papers sample papers and model test papers are available with the solutions Sign up today on Bright Duty and avail your courses at affordable prices. But on the other hand, there is unfavorable balance of trade also. So it is the situation where the value of imports is more than the value of exports. So this was the situation uh, which was existed when India got independence. so we need to import many of the items to meet the requirements because we did not have large scale development of our industries we were not producing goods on such a large scale to meet our requirements so we need to import very many items to meet the requirement of the people in india so that way the value of imports was much than the value of exports so we were exporting only very few items right so till date i have to tell you that india's international trade remains to be unfavorable only the reason here is though we have uh, produced items on large scale on the other hand our population is also increasing our demands are increasing so naturally whatever we are producing it is not enough to meet our requirements so we need to import to meet our requirements so that way till date our 
trade is unfavorable. The reason here is our value of <coughs> imports are more than the value of export. So, we can count with our hands the items that we export to other countries like coffee, tea, then cotton and then we have got few uh, silk. So, that way these agricultural uh, goods that we are exporting they fetch much less value than the industrial goods. So, that way the value of import is still on the highest side than the value of export. So, India's international trade is always unfavorable till now. Unless we control our population, this cannot be turned into a favorable one or in other words, we need to strike a balance between our population and also the production of goods. So, there is a widening gap between both these things by which we are not able to be uh, having favorable balance of trade till now. Now, the next one is when you talk about the salient features of our international trade. So, what I told you uh, the international trade that we have been doing at the time of independence and what we are doing today have undergone a lot of change in terms of volume of trade, in terms of direction of trade, in terms of items of trade everything has undergone a change. So, we have to see what are the items of imports and exports that we are doing today, right. So, now let me just uh, tell you the important points about our international trade. So, you all know India is a seafaring country right from historical times and the international trade is mainly carried on through the seas and oceans that surrounds India, right. And before independence, our foreign trade that we were doing it was unilateral that means one sided. So, our raw materials were sent to Britain and from there the manufactured goods were coming to India. So, that way it was just one way uh, relations uh, trade relations that we have between India and UK. But today our trade has expanded to bilateral and multilateral that means with many countries in the world. India has trade relations with almost all the major trading blocks and all the geographical regions in the world, right. So, irrespective of whether it is developed or underdeveloped or uh, developing, we are having trade relations with many countries in the world, more than 80 countries with which India is now trading uh, today. So, that way after independence, the volume of trade, the nature of trade and the direction of trade have undergone a change. Now, what are the changes that have taken place? So, earlier India used to uh, export the raw materials which are not processed that is semi processed and uh, raw materials they were exported from India and we used to import food grains and other things to meet our requirements. So, but now the items of export and import have undergone a change. Now, coming to the items of export the share of agriculture and allied products it is about 9.9 percent ores and minerals it is 4 percent and gems and jewelry it is 14.7 percent then petroleum product it is 16.8 percent according to 2010-11 years right. So, that way these are the items of uh, export that we are doing it uh, today that is uh, in 2010 and 11. Now, during the same year the items of imports include the petroleum and petroleum products that is around 28.6 percent, then pearls and precious stones 9.4 percent, then chemicals 5.2 percent, coal, coke and briquettes, coal briquettes that is a uh, bricks that is 2.7 percent and the machinery is about 6.4 percent again in 2010-11. So, bulk of the imports as a group has registered an increase accounting for 28.2 percent which includes the fertilizers 3.4 percent, cereals 14.3 percent, edible oil 17.4 percent, 
uh, news print and paper manufacture 40.3 percent in 2010 and 11. So, with the development of our agriculture, uh, we need to um, enrich the soil by adding very many fertilizers. Sometimes due to natural calamities, we are not able to meet our requirements. So, we need to import the cereals and edible oils and then with the spread of education, we need to um, manufacture the paper to meet the growing needs of the population. So, you can see the value of newsprint and paper manufacture stands at 40.3 percent, right. And lastly, if you talk about, we have exchange of goods has superseded by the exchange of information and knowledge. So, we have the uh, export of um, IT uh, technology, which is really has made remarkable progress in the last few decades. India has now become the leading center of software at the international level and it is a major source of foreign exchange through the export of information technology. So, we are now able to compete with other countries in terms of uh, information technology, which is now one of the major source of foreign exchange to us. Now, the last topic of the chapter is about tourism. So, tourism is again a very, very important field which is now contributing in a big way to our economy. So, India has got lot of uh, tourist places, historical monuments and uh, scenic beauty that is sightseeing sites and heritage, the rich cultural heritage by which tourism has now become a major source of foreign exchange to India. So, you can see the picture where you have got the adventure tourism and then we have got eco tourism. These are all the different types of tourism which has been developed in recent years. So, millions of uh, people come from other countries to uh, visit India for various reasons. So, India has been ranked as the world's fourth best holiday heaven. That means, uh, we are having uh, this tourism has developed on a large scale and we have got lot of places of interest which has uh, attracted foreign tourists in a large scale. Now, coming to the salient features of our tourism, India has made tremendous progress in tourism in the last three decades that is 30 years due to increasing number of tourists who are visiting India has really shown an increase of 11.8 percent during the year 2010 as against 2009. So, year after year the number of tourists who are coming to India are on the increasing side. And because of the um, visit of the tourists, we are also able to earn valuable foreign exchange. So, tourism has contributed to about 64,888 crores of rupees as foreign exchange in 2010, right. And the no number of tourists who have visited in 2010 was about 5.78 million. So, naturally over the years, the number is on the increasing side, which is contributing in a big way to our economy by the way of tourism. And in terms of employment, more than 15 million people are directly employed in the tourism industry. So, this is again one of the uh, very important um, sector which has got uh, vast employment potential. So, we have got the hospitality industry, tourism industry which are all part of this industry which is an, then uh, we have the handicrafts industry which is also the one which is being promoted because of this uh, tourism, right. So, this tourism has promoted national integration that is within our own country and supported local handicrafts and also the cultural heritage of our country has reached far and wide. And it has also promoted international understanding, right, because people from India are going to other countries and other people from other countries are coming to India. So, that way there is exchange of uh, cultures which has helped in promotion of uh, international understanding through the spread of our culture and also the heritage. So, we celebrate uh, 
festivals of other countries in our country and our festivals are celebrated in other countries in the world. So, that way it has contributed on a large scale to the international understanding and today we have got different types of tourism developed in India that is people come to India for different uh, reasons. So, people are coming for taking the treatment for different kinds of uh, ailment that is the medical tourism, then people come for uh, business, then heritage tourism, adventure tourism and so on. So, that way these are all the different types of tourism that is developed in India which is contributing in a big way to our um, economy. Thus, India has vast potential for the development of tourism which is an upcoming industry in the near future and concerted efforts are taken by the government for the development of tourism. So, we are um, making serious efforts to maintain the uh, various tourist places, historical monuments and also provide better services to the people so that more and more tourists come to India which can contribute in a big way for our economy, right. So, please learn all these topics uh, very well. This chapter carries uh, more weightage. So, you have to learn about the means of transport, then communication, international trade, especially this uh, uh, role played by um, tourism can also be a uh, question of uh, 3 marks. So, please uh, remember how many people are employed in this industry and then what are the other contributions um, uh, given by the tourism sector, ok. So, all the best, thank you very much. Now, subscribe to Bright Duty course at rupees 1 per day only. Download Bright Duty app from Play Store and get the online courses prepared by competent and experienced teachers for different education boards of classes 6 to 10. Bright Duty courses are available for the subjects of Math, Science, Social Science, English and Hindi in English and Hindi medium. Bright Duty follows three-step approach that is learning, assessment and exam preparation. In learning, topic-wise video lectures with explanation of concepts and discussion of textbook examples and questions are available with the solutions. In assessment, topic-wise online MCQ test, practice assignments and chapter-wise question bank are available with the solutions. In exam preparation, previous year's question papers, sample papers and model test papers are available with the solutions. Sign up today on Bright Tuesday and avail your courses at affordable prices.